Whenever we begin to explore any place outside of Earth, we look for the presence of water. We've seen in previous videos why. Water is a pretty solid basis for life as we understand it for various reasons. It is also one of the indicators of habitability, whether it be future, present or past. So, whenever there's any astronomical body that holds liquid water, scientists and astronomers get all excited. The solar system is surprisingly full of liquid water. We know that beyond the asteroid belt, the planets and moons are much colder and there's more ice, including water ice. We've discovered water on other bodies like Jupiter's moon Europa, Saturn's moon Enceladus and even the asteroid Ceres. And now, scientists think that one of Saturn's other moons, Mimas, also has a subsurface or an underground ocean made of liquid water underneath an icy crust. This water will be warmer than the ice above and could theoretically support life. In this video, we'll look at what this study was, how it was done, and what it means for planetary exploration if there is water on Mimas. We'll also see why this moon is shaped very much like the Death Star from Star Wars. I'm Sandhya Ramesh and this is Pure Science. Minus is one of Saturn's moons. It was discovered back in 1789 and it is named after one of Greek mythology's giants, Minus. It's not a very big moon, it's just about 400 kilometers wide. Its surface area is commonly compared to that of the size of Spain. The moon has a very low density, which shows that it is mostly composed of ices with little rock. There's not much else that makes up the more solid looking moons in these parts of the solar system anyway. Minus is tidally locked to Saturn, just the way our moon is to Earth. So just as we see only one face of the moon at all times, there's only one side of Minus that faces Saturn as well. This moon is most known for looking like the Death Star. It has an impact crater on its body that is very similar to the depression of the gun in the fictional weapon station. This crater is called the Herschel Crater and is named after William Herschel who discovered Mimas. The Herschel Crater is almost one third as wide as the moon itself. It is 10 kilometers deep and has a central peak that rises up to 6 kilometers. These peaks occur within craters because as an impact occurs, there's molten rock and material that form the ejecta that come out from the surface and then fall back due to gravity, solidifying as it does so. This is also how our solar system's tallest peak formed, which is in the middle of the Rhea Silvia crater on the asteroid Vesta. The impact on Mimas was so large and it would have been so powerful that it would have almost fully shattered the moon. We can see the impact on the other side of the crater right across the moon and this side is highly fractured because of the shock waves that would have come from the impact. In 2014, when Cassini was still orbiting Saturn, researchers using the camera instrument on the orbiter noticed that there were some tiny anomalies or variations in the moon's wobble as it went around Saturn. They concluded that this could be because either its core was elongated and not spherical and pointing towards Saturn or that there was an underground ocean below the icy surface. Since then, researchers have been speculating that there could be an underground ocean and other studies have followed. In 2017, a study showed that the crust of the moon would not be strong enough to withstand the stresses from an underground ocean. Many planetary scientists thought that the asymmetry produced by the Herschel impact could explain the variations in Mimas' wobble. But then now, researchers have shown that the icy shell of Mimas is actually strong enough to withstand the stresses from a liquid subsurface ocean. What's more, the lead author for the new study is the same lead author of the previous study, which stated that an underground ocean is not possible. Rodin and her team decided to forget what scientists think Mimas is like and instead decided to model how it would be should there be an underground ocean. As the moon gets tugged and pulled by Saturn's gravity, its interior also gets flexed and stretched in different directions. This produces heat which induces geological activity. But Mimas has not shown geological activity like Europa and Enceladus have. 
Enceladus has even ice volcanoes that shoot up material into space, but Mimas has no such observable activity. So the scientists developed an algorithm to simulate tidal forces exerted by Saturn on Mimas and its interior. When they did this, they found that there was a fair bit of heat that was generated by the tidal effects, which is expected, but they realized that this heat could actually be enough to sustain a warmer underground ocean underneath an icy exterior. The problem that this modeling solved is the lack of cracks on the surface of the moon. Cracks would have occurred when liquid water froze to ice. As ice freezes and forms layers, it would also expand in the process. As it expands, it increases in volume and pushes against the ice above it. We can see evidence of this on Europa and Celadis and we can see that their surface is cracked. But Mimas's icy surface does not show any cracks. That said, this ice cannot be thickening today. We would have seen cracks if it had been. So this means that the moon has to either be stable or it could be warming. This was also a modeling study just like the previous one that said no ocean was possible but this was a more sophisticated model and it concluded that Mimas had the ability to host a 24 to 31 kilometer thick ice shell over a liquid water ocean. The study does not confirm the presence of an underground ocean but it makes the possibility more likely than an elongated core that weirdly points towards Saturn. That is also still very much possible though, however, the possibility of the presence of an underground ocean is very exciting and it is backed by data from the Cassini spacecraft. Now the researchers say that if Mimas indeed does have an ocean, it represents a new class of small ocean worlds in our solar system, stealth ocean worlds, whose surface shows no indication that there is water underneath. Mimas' surface is just very heavily cratered, so scientists always assumed that it was sort of a ball of solid ice, so to speak. What is now critical to understand, if there is water underneath, is how thick the ice shell is. Cassini is now dead, it has crashed into Saturn, so there's no spacecraft to visit Mimas. But scientists don't really need to visit the moon specifically to understand how the ice on the moon behaves. Visiting any body with water underneath an icy surface would work. So the next bit of evidence that will help understand Mimas better will come from a totally different planet. It will come from Jupiter when Juno performs a flyby of Europa at the end of 2022 to study this icy shell's characteristics. The presence of water on Mimas will also strengthen the case for exploring icy worlds such as missions like NASA's Europa Clipper which will fly to the icy moon in 2024.